the cost of being a woman, we have beauty products, we have skincare products, feminine hygiene products, those totals add up considerably. And I recently came across this article that gives the estimate on how much more women spend than men on these various categories. And the total is alarming especially because it's likely much more than that in the world we're in with constant consumerism, constant influencers coming at us at every angle. I think this total is only going to balloon. That is, of course, unless we take some inventory and take our own power back. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. Most weeks I put together content on the things that are legit helping me. We are all messed up, okay? We're all messed up. And this is my little outlet that really helps me kind of channel and work through things. And the fact that you're watching this is amazing to me. And for those of you who are so supportive and leave such kind comments and like and subscribe, it really means so much to me. I cannot thank you enough. Anyways, let's get into this article, break that down, and we'll just continue on from there. But I gotta tell you first how I came across this article because I went searching for it. Because surprisingly enough, there's not much content on this topic. Surprise, surprise, right? Surprise, surprise. We're in the matrix, people. Probably not the best analogy. You know what I mean. We're in the system. We're consumers. So a few weeks ago, I realized, dang, I, I've spent a lot on aesthetics. And I don't know that it's really done much for me enough to warrant the cost, but uh, I... I confronted that cost. I tallied it up. Over nine years, I had spent $30,000 on various aesthetic things. And it sounds insane, but it sounds insane because much of the time, we don't tally up where our expenses over a long period of time go. For instance, if you're someone that gets your nails done, say like a gel nail or like a dip nail once a month with maybe a petty, you spend about $100 a month on nails. Over a decade, that's easily over $10,000 on nails alone. We can play that game all over the place. But it had me thinking, as women, how much on average do women pay towards skincare and various beauty things and upkeep in general? Now, it varies across the board. I went through different TikToks for some women were saying their upkeep's $1,100 a month. $1,100 a month. Extrapolate that over 10 years. Some women, it was $500 a month. Still a lot. I then came across this article that estimated women spend over $526,000 more than men over their lifetime. And if you're like, where does that number come from? They basically estimated from the year 21 to 81, because 81 is the average lifespan of a woman. They did these kind of basic estimates, which I think is totally underclubbed. I think it's so conservative. You'll see what I mean here. So here's the categories that they isolated. Personal care products, so things like shampoo and razors and stuff like that. They say that women spend $132,000 more than men across their lifetime, which ends up being about $183 a month. Their examples they're using, they're like, like, women pay about $9 for shampoo where men pay $6. Um, I'm gonna go out there and say a lot of women are paying a lot more than $9 for shampoo, okay? I'm gonna go out there and say that. They say extra money spent on feminine care products, $1,920. I also think that's quite conservative. That would be about $7 a month. If you're on a copper IUD, I can tell you right now that's gonna be way more than that, if you know what I mean. So according to the National Organization for Women, the average woman spends about $20 on feminine hygiene products per cycle, adding up to about 18,000 over her lifetime. We all burn, yes! $18,000. That is an investment. They said extra money spent on clothing, 1,500, which ends up averaging $2 a month for women, more than men. That's also quite under club. I have a few girlfriends, I can tell you it's a lot more than that, way more. In the past few years, I've gone to like a truly capsule wardrobe after I learned about this concept called Kibby ID, which is basically the way for you to recognize what is or isn't gonna look flattering on you so that instead of just online shopping and buying these random things that you like, but you don't know whether it's gonna work for you, that Kibby ID helps you recognize that. If that's one takeaway for you, you can thank me later. So I think women spend way more on clothing than men shapewear alone, then they assess beauty products that women spend 300 grand more than men over their lifetime, which ends up being $416 a month. That's crazy. 
But then again, depending on what kind of skincare addict you are, or you know, makeup, like whatever you're into, maybe that is reasonable. Then we get to healthcare. Women spend $67,000 more than men over their lifetime, because men don't go to the doctor. Yes, it's a generalization, but it's a pretty real generalization. The average is about $93 a month. It's just expensive being a woman, especially if you're dealing with some issues. It sucks, but also, we have it pretty great in many ways. So then total extra cost being about $526,000 more than men, which ends up being $731 a month more than men, which is a crazy figure. But if you look at your skincare routine, you look at your getting ready routine compared to a man, it makes sense. So we just did like a quick review of that because I want to keep this to the point. Based on where you are, you could be like, man, I spend a lot more than that. You may also be like, I'm not in that club, thank goodness, whatever. It's just awareness here because we are now in a world where we are constantly bombarded with marketing, social media, algorithms, basically social media and algorithms. All over the place we're influenced. And that gets to why I think that total is gonna be a lot bigger over time because we have this nonstop consumerism. Influencers galore, constant mirages as I call it, where it's like you see this influencer and you're like, maybe I could be like that. If I just bought her whole skincare routine, I could be her. And the reality is you're not them. You're your own person. There's an influencer, stunning girl, Emily Gemma. She's just got it going on. And there've been times where I'm like, man, I wanna be like that. I wanna do my hair like that. I wanna be all dressed up like that. You know what? It's not me. I'm not that way. I'm pretty basic. Yes, now and then I like to get glammed up, but it doesn't make sense for me to aspire to be that way because it's just not gonna happen. And so there's these mirages where we're like, oh, I wanna be like this person. And it's like, that's not you. That's not a knock on any of us. Us, but like we're all individuals. So there's that. And then there's constant product development. Think about all the beauty devices that are out now that were not out 10 years ago or supplements that are being researched. How many of us are now taking collagen that never thought to buy collagen 10 years ago? So many examples of this. That really is why I think this is going to get a lot bigger as marketers identify new needs and get more clever on how to convince us to invest in these things. We really have to be conscious of this, build greater awareness. And that really sums up these takeaways I'm gonna share with you. First of all, and I guess I kind of covered this already, but takeaway one, be honest with yourself. I know I have to be honest with myself. When I wanna try this new thing, what am I trying to get out of this? Much of the time, I just find such a thrill in finding something that works. That's what I'm after. It's almost like it creates this validation in myself that I found this thing. What's crazy is most of the time, even though I found this thing I think works, after several months, it kind of loses its excitement. Sometimes you use a product enough to realize maybe it doesn't work like you thought it did. My sister and I, it's hilarious. She's the biggest influencer in my life. She's not an influencer, but she influences me. She's like, Rachel, you've got to try this new supplement. It's amazing. It's the best thing ever. And then I try it. And then she's like a few months down the line and she's like, actually, no, it's not that great. And so anytime she like touts about something, I'm like, give it a few months, then let me know. So getting honest with ourselves, what are we really after? I think being skeptical is really important. Takeaway number two, clearly define your future self. So I gave you the example of this influencer that like I kind of aspire to be, but when I get clear on who I really wanna be, I wanna laugh more. I wanna have more meaningful relationships. I wanna relax more. I don't wanna be so reactive to things. That's really where I wanna put my energy. Although it looks great, the idea of looking like this beautiful person, that's not actually what I want. And some of these concepts I'm learning in this book, there's always a book recommendation. It's called Be Your Future Self Now. And it just really walks you through the exercise of getting clear of who you wanna be and starting to be that person. It really helps you get really clear on what's important to you. Because sometimes I think about all the things I do and all the time I spend in doing those things and then the things that are most important to me, much of the time they don't line up. My relationship with my husband is one of the most important things to me. How many books and how much energy am I devoting to that? Not enough to line up. So getting alignment there with like what's important to you and like where you put your energy is something I'm being aware of. <laughs> I realize we've gone like way off the deep end, but then coming back to taking inventory. Where is your money going? 
And is it really worth it to you? So I used to get my nails done all the time. I've built this great relationship with my nail girl, Tiffany, but my nails grow so fast and my nails don't make me feel polished like they used to. If I'm going to like a work on a work trip, then I wanna get my nails done. But to have them done every month is not worth it to me anymore. So I've cut back on that. There've also been times where I'm a member at like a given gym just so I can walk on their treadmill. I don't walk on their treadmill enough. It's not worth it to me. Cut that and hey, if you're into it, if getting your lashes done and your nails done, if it helps you show up in the world, then go get them, who cares? Whatever, do you, absolutely do you. But for some of us, it's like, wait a second, I'm doing this. Is it really doing anything for me? Maybe not. Is society telling me or the influencers kind of telling me I need to do this? Maybe, but do I really care? No. That's the kind of stuff we need to identify. And it's kind of off the topic of upkeep, but I've even become aware of how much of the time, the way I invest in my friendships will be like, oh, let's go grab dinner or let's go grab drinks together. When we both would rather go on a long walk, not only is it much more cost effective, but you get steps in, your mind opens up so much more, the conversations are so much deeper on a walk because you're just like freely thinking. Andrew Huberman has a word for that. When you move through space, whether or not it's through walking, biking, even swimming, the visual images around you are passing by on your eyes. That is very good for the visual system. And it's very good for the mood systems and the neuromodulator systems of the brain and body that regulate mood. Anyhow, swapping for more meaningful things is probably another thing we could tack on to the takeaways. But to close out with some perspective, we are in such a fast paced world and we are all trying to keep up with being this ideal person and working so hard on ourselves. It's very easy to get distracted by the shiny balls and to lose sight of what's most important to us. And in this world of marketing coming at us constantly and very convincing influencers, it's empowering to recognize that at the end of the day, we are always in the driver's seat. And the more introspective you can be and more honest with yourself you can be, the more that you can be the driver and the influencer in your life and cut out all the other BS. So these are things that I've just been noodling on and working through because I realize I've been so pulled into the current and wanting to be accepted by the people that I really don't care to be accepted by. I'm working to get really clear and getting back to really what's most important. So if nothing else, I hope that I've given you some good takeaways and get some food for thought. If nothing else, and to recognize how crazy it is that as women, we can spend this much. And on some level, it's empowering. And on some, it's like, wow, it's out of control. But at the end of the day, again, we're not the victim. We're in the driver's seat. So with that, thank you so much for being here. And I really hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.